Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, The Effect of Adjuvant Chemotherapy on Survival of Patients with Stage 3 Colon Cancer Diagnosed After Age 75 by Hannah K. Sanoff. My name is Hyman Muss, and I'm Professor of Medicine and Director of Geriatric Oncology at the Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. My oncologic specialty is medical oncology. Oncologists are now caring for an increasing number of older Americans with cancer. Life expectancy is now 79 years for an American born in 2010. 55% of all new cancer diagnoses are in patients 65 years and older, and 37% in patients 75 and older. The average age of a patient newly diagnosed with colon cancer is 70 years old, and like most solid tumors, the incidence and mortality rates of colon cancer dramatically increase with age. Of the 103,000 estimated new patients with colon cancer in 2012, about 40% will be 75 and older, and 40% will present with a stage 3 lesion. That's important because a 75-year-old in average health has an estimated further survival of 11 to 13 years, and at 85, 6 to 7 years. Like for breast cancer, adjuvant therapy of stage 3 colon cancer dramatically improves survival. That's what makes the report by Sanoff and her colleagues in this issue of the journal so important. Sanoff and her colleagues examined four data sets that included about 5,000 patients to get a better idea in the real-world setting of the potential benefits of adjuvant chemotherapy in patients 75 years and older with stage 3 colon cancer. As expected, chemotherapy receipt was inversely associated with increasing age and greater comorbidity. This analysis showed that adjuvant chemotherapy saves lives in patients with stage 3 colon cancer, and also it suggests that the benefits of adjuvant treatment in older patients are similar in magnitude to those of all patients reported in clinical trials. The hazard ratio for the benefit of chemotherapy versus none in the Sanoff analysis is 0.60, with a 95% confidence interval of 0.53 to 0.68. A similar benefit was seen in 3,400 stage stage 2 and stage 3 colon cancer patients from seven randomized trials that compared surgery alone with surgery and fluoropyrimidine chemotherapy. This hazard corresponds to an absolute five-year improvement in survival for all patients of 7% favoring chemotherapy, including those older than 70 years. Of note, there was no relationship of age and nausea and vomiting, stomatitis, or diarrhea. Leukopenia was more common in older patients. A key goal of the Sanoff analysis was to determine the value of oxaliplatin when added to fluoropyrimidines. In her study, oxaliplatin was given to less than half of the patients 65 and older and further declined with increasing age. There was a trend, not statistically significant, for improved survival with oxaliplatin that corresponded to an absolute five improvement in survival at three years, which was similar to the hazard ratios reported in the MOSAIC trial and the NSABP CO7 trial, but not in another large trial data set accent where the benefit of oxaliplatin was only seen in patients less than 65 years. 
except for very young patients, available data show no major age-related biologic differences in colon cancer. It's likely that the major reason for differences in survival among older and younger patients is the increasing proportion of non-cancer deaths associated with increasing age. Oxaliplatin is associated with more toxicity, including more diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and neutropenia compared with fluoropyrimidines. In addition, oxaliplatin causes peripheral neuropathy, a potentially disabling side effect of oxaliplatin in older patients. In the MOSAIC trial, which included few patients 75 years and older, the upper age range was 75 years, grade 1 to 3 peripheral neuropathy, mainly neurosensory, was seen in about 90% of patients during treatment and declined to about 30% at one year, with only 1% grade 3. In the NSABP C07 trial, 31% of patients on the oxaliplatin regimen described neurotoxicity that persisted at 18 months. Most patients recovered from their neuropathy, but 10% of patients still had unresolved neurotoxicity at 27 months. Although not life-threatening, neuropathy could result in major functional loss in some elders and needs to be carefully factored into any treatment decision. So how do we decide what to do for our older patients with stage three colon cancer? First, we have to accurately estimate our patient's life expectancy, and several calculators for this are now available online. For instance, ePrognosis.com. Adjuvant Online can also do this and can estimate the absolute benefits of treatment in a format that can be presented to patients. For patients where there are concerns about treatment tolerance, getting a geriatric assessment can be of great help. Since 80% of recurrences in patients with stage 3 colon cancer are seen in the first three years after diagnosis, and about 90% of patients die within five years after relapse, Chemotherapy needs to be strongly considered for most older patients with stage 3 colon cancer. Although it is likely that the added value of oxaliplatin is similar in older and younger patients, the potentially small percentage improvement in survival may be easily offset by comorbidity, which shortens overall survival, and by toxicity, especially neurotoxicity, that can cause functional decline and a poor quality of life. The decision to recommend a 5-FU oxaliplatin regimen in an older patient must be made on an individual basis and after careful geriatric assessment. The Sanoff and other similar studies also clearly point out what we know to be true. Older patients are less likely to receive adjuvant chemotherapy and to be entered into clinical trials. The patients in the Sanoff study had already had surgical resection and therefore had been pre-selected as healthier. Age was the clearest predictor of whether or not a patient received adjuvant chemotherapy. Caring for elders offers a great opportunity for collaboration among oncologists and geriatricians. The model for geriatric care is based upon the functional assessment of the patient, not the age of the patient and the ability of a patient to function well in their daily routines. Physicians caring for elders who are uncertain as to how to manage them should team up with geriatricians and other experts to make the best treatment decisions. This concludes this JCO podcast, and thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.